Mon âme a soif de toi, mon cœur a faim de toi, mon ami. Je suis triste, je meurs là, je meurs. The nature of your ministry is determined by the nature of your conversion. The nature of your messages is determined by the nature of your secret life. The power in your words is determined by the power of your life. If your life has no power, your messages will have no power. Beloved, if you're a fake, don't even try to join a department in the church. If you haven't yet left your life of sin, I beseech you, don't attempt, attempt to serve God in this church. Leave us be with our ushers. Leave us be with our choir members. Leave us be. Don't join. Don't try to join in. Stay away. I'm telling you, keep off. Stay away. You're not yet saved out of your filthy mouth. Don't try to join the ushering team. You're not yet saved from your seductive, seductive clothing. Don't try to join the choir. What about the members of the choir groups that are not scheduled for today? If I were to ask you to come and sing, do your outfits reflect your faith? Choir member. Mm -hmm. Of choir number one and choir number two. If I request a song that only your choir group knows and I say, come lead us in praise and worship, will you come forth? You have separate closets for days when you're scheduled and the days that you're not. On, a, on your days off, you wear disgraceful outfits. But when you're scheduled, your outfits become born again. Sisters who were preaching here the other day, could you come up and read us a word? You sisters who stand here preaching, could you come up and read us the Bible? What's your outfit like? Could you come? Yours is a form of godliness based on a schedule. Your godliness is scheduled a false godliness. A fake, I challenge you right now. Come show your devotion to God. You've never known God. You've never known God. You just tell stories about Him. It's just talk. You've never experienced God. You just babble. Understand that circumcision is painful. And because it's so painful, young boys are especially terrified of this. If it must be done when they're a bit older, they get very terrified. They'll do everything to avoid getting the procedure done. So they always find excuses to postpone. The same is true for some people. They know that the circumcision of the heart, which is repentance, is a painful procedure. Therefore, they always postpone their repentance. They avoid it. And an opportunity may present itself, but they'll always postpone it again and again. Till so one day they figure they, could, they should just make up their own painless circumcision. A false circumcision. Name a sacrifice that you've had to make for God. What happens during a circumcision? There is a piece of skin that's removed. That's referred to as foreskin. So the foreskin is always removed and thrown out. A piece of the skin gets thrown out. What have you given up for the sake of your God? What sacrifice have you had to make? The falsely circumcised refuse to give up anything for the sake of God. Yet they want to be in the things of God. What have you given up for God? What did you offer on the altar of the cross when you became saved? What had to part ways with your life through your conversion? Because in circumcision, there's a piece of the skin that's left behind. In fact, that's the beauty of it. That pain, that scar, that's the beauty of it. And those who refuse circumcision have a beauty disorder. And since they falsely circumcised have a disorder, they're unable to resemble Jesus because they rejected repentance that brings us to resemble Jesus. What have you had to give up for Jesus? You attend church. Okay, I'll give you that. But what have you had to give up for God? 
What have you had to leave behind? Oh, all the glory to God.